Good evening. Um, Good evening. Once again, we appreciate the invitation to be here. Um, you got your Bibles with you. You want to follow along. We'll take the text out of 2 Timothy chapter 3 tonight. Uh, book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> uh, don't have some long sermon for you. You know, we're not going to be up here till midnight, but... Uh, <laughs> I guess, well, that's the plan anyway. You know, stuff happens and the Lord takes over. But uh, um, we got a um, message tonight is uh, the Lord being the guide here is, uh, is all about the Word. And uh, we, uh, this holy book that I'm holding in my hands is the, it's the Word of Life. It's the bread. It's our, our daily bread that we need to consume every day. We, uh, we need the Word of God. And, and this book contains. You know, it's, this book has the secret to life. You know, and it's a, uh, it's our help when we're needing help. It's our our lifter upper. It's our uh, our comfort in our time of need. It's our our healing and our uh, it's our way of salvation. It's our light when the path is dim. It's uh, it's everything that we we need. You know, it's uh, many people today are uh, forsaking the word. You know, and uh, they're making their own word up. You know, they uh, there's a Bible for everybody. You know, there's a, uh, you know they. they Say this to uh, certain ones. They say are to make it easier to understand and stuff. But but then there are certain other uh, translations that uh, yeah, they, they just flat out cut stuff out, right? They're just uh, they're just getting whatever suits them. And uh, you know, oh, I don't like that part. I don't like that part where it says, "Thou shalt <laughs> obey." You know, <laughs> do what the Lord says. They don't they don't like that stuff. So, uh, but uh, every word is in here is good, and uh, and that's what we're kind of going to try to jump into here tonight. And, Book of Second Timothy, chapter three, and uh, we got our whole big bunch of notes here. But uh, <clears throat> and we'll start reading verse fourteen. We won't <clears throat> try not to get too much here. But verse fourteen here in Second Timothy, chapter three, it says, uh, "But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them." And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And I will stop reading there. May the Lord add a blessing to that. Um, we, uh, and so this letter is written from Paul to Timothy, and Timothy was a, a young preacher there, and uh, we find out that he's been, he's been raised with godly mother and a, a godly grandmother, and they taught him in the ways of truth, they taught him the Bible, they, uh, they, they raised him up the way that he ought to be been raised up. We know that the, uh, there's, the, uh, there's the reason America is in turmoil right now, you know, because the, uh, families have forsaken the Bible, because parents aren't raising their children according to the word, word of God, because they're... Uh, they say, well, I've let them get to the age of 18 and let them decide. Well, uh, by that time, the world's already got a hold of them. And, uh, you know, we, <laughs> they've brainwashed them. You get your, uh, there's an, enough brainwashing in the school system as it is, you know. But uh, if you give them no formal knowledge of the word, you give them no holy teaching, you give them nothing uh, to stand on, they'll surely fall. Um, but it's good to, that there's still some that are raising their kids right. There's still some that come into the church, you know, uh, when the doors are open. There's still some that read to their children at night, and they don't <laughs> read to them uh, the, the bad things that are, uh, <laughs> whatever we, you know, there's all kinds of fairy tales out there, and, and there's nothing wrong with a good, uh, you know, night saving a, a princess or whatever, but, uh, but those things don't give you life, but... Hey, give me the Bible. We need to you know, we need to have some more teaching of Daniel and, and how he stood up against the king and his his decree because he had he knew who he believed in. You know, he had something worth fighting for. He had a God worth praying to. You know, he didn't have to be some quiet, closeted Christian. You know, uh, he he could open his window toward Jerusalem and pray three times a day just like he always had because he's serving the true and living God. And uh, there's there's no one else worth serving. And he, um, and so uh, we need more people that's willing to stand up. And, uh, but it's good that, that Timothy here, he, was, he had the right upbringing, right? And, uh, and so uh, 
Paul was saying, he's, he's where we picked up there, he said, Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Hey, don't, don't forsake the stuff uh, that you were taught in Sunday school growing up. Don't forget about Jonah and the whale. Don't forget about Moses going up to the mountain and getting the Ten Commandments. Hey, don't forget about any of that stuff. Don't forget about Jesus uh, and all the mighty miracles and, and most of all the salvation he brought. Don't forget about those things which you've learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that's something, too. We've got to make sure we're listening to the right people, <laughs> right? He said, hey, your, your teachers were good. Your teachers taught you the right things. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's plenty of false teachers out there that will try to turn you aside. Uh, you, you, uh, you know, I met one one time at Holzer. I was sitting in the waiting room at Holzer, and, and he just comes along trying to persuade me of his way of believing. And I, I just, uh, <laughs> uh, I gave him back the, the words that I had, you know. He said, oh, you, you sure do know the scripture a little bit. <laughs> I said, well, I read it every day, right? That's, uh, hey, it's, it's, I, I know when you're telling me a lie because I've read it, and that's what you're telling me is not in there, right? And that's, uh, it's good that we can be sure of what we're, what we're hearing and what we've, what we've learned. Uh, but know who you've learned them from. Know that, hey, your parents are trying to teach you right, and, uh, and uh, these other people are trying to turn you aside. They're trying to tell you that Jesus didn't raise from the dead. They're trying to tell you that it's not worth serving him. They're trying to tell you it's not worth being a, a helper of Paul. But, hey, I'm telling you, <laughs> you you're on the right way. right? You're, you're, you want to go to heaven? We'll live according to the will of God. But anyway, we'll try to move along here. That's not the message tonight. But, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And truly, that's the only way. You can read any other book in the world, but it's not going to give you, make you wise unto salvation. But this Holy Bible will lead you to Christ. And that will help you get saved. Uh, the Holy Spirit will talk to you. It will penetrate your heart. It will convict you and let you know that, hey, I'm, I'm not living the right. I'm, I've, I'm a sinner, and I need to be saved. I need to come be born again. I need to talk it all over with my God and have Him forgive me of everything I've ever done. I need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, right? That's the, uh, we need that. We need the truth, and we need to, uh, to get in this Holy Scripture. Amen. Um, again, you won't, you won't find that in the, uh, any of those other things. I don't, even, I don't waste my time studying all the other religions because I know that they're not right. I know enough about uh, the external stuff that I see. Uh, I know that I don't want to follow them. I know that I don't want to dig any deeper because I'll, I'll be blinded. I'll be turned into the darkness and... Uh, but I want to be filled with the light. Amen. Jesus is the light. And uh, uh, this word, as we read in Psalm 119, it's a light unto our path. It's a lamp unto our feet. All right? Uh, it seemed like I always flip those around. I hope I got it right this time. But over, anyway, it's over in Psalm 119. You can, you can go read that leaky chapter. But uh, it, it's a guide. It's, it lights our path. And this word is, uh, you want to get through this dark world, and this world truly is dark right now. It's dark for various reasons. It's filled with sin. It's filled with chaos. It's filled with hate and turmoil. But hey, you want some light? Get in the Word. Amen. It'll, it'll guide you on home. You know, you don't have to stumble and fall if the, if the Lord is your guide. You know, uh, we get, uh, you get listening to man. Hey, he said, the blind leadeth the blind. They'll both fall in the ditch, right? But uh, hey, we've got a good guide. We've got the ultimate guide. He's gonna, he wants to lead you on home. He wants to get you to heaven. He wants to, uh, to see you be happy forever. Um, and He's, he's going to light the path home. But we've got to read the Word. Amen. All right. Didn't know he's going to say all that stuff, but um, it'll make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And uh, that's that name above every name. Uh, there's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved, but it's by that, that name of Jesus. And uh, truly, we don't want to proclaim any other one. I, I, I don't want to know anything other than Jesus Christ and him crucified, right? Uh, but, but give me Jesus. Amen. All right. So with, <clears throat> in verse 16, here's where we... Uh, we, again, we may not spend very much time here, but this is where I really wanted to get to tonight. Uh, talking about the Scripture. And the Scripture, was, it says here that it was given by inspiration of God. And you'll find out that uh, apparently Paul may have even coined this term, but it, it literally translates to something along the lines of uh, God breathed. Scripture is it, just straight from the mouth of God. It's Scripture, it, it's God spoke it, and, and it's, it, it got down into, into print, you know. Uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, that uh, prophets wrote it down, and uh, you know all the different people through down down through the ages, God inspired them to hey write down these words, and uh, we find out that they didn't really even know what they were writing half the time, especially the prophets. There, you write those things about Christ seven hundred before, years before he was even here, or a thousand years in some cases, but 
uh, or even more. Uh, He had no idea what they were writing, but yet it was written uh, by inspiration of God. He said, hey, here's here's what I'm going to do. You you have no idea what I'm even saying, but here's what I'm going to do. And then when it comes to past, people still don't even understand what it is, but but yet uh, he he gives us the understanding through the, the Holy Ghost. But um, but for all scripture is given by inspiration of God. I'm sure glad that it's this whole book is holy. There's not one snippet of it that's, that's good, and the rest of it we cut out. And uh, but it's it's all good. It's all profitable. It's all useful in our kingdom, or to to, to grow us into in His kingdom. And uh, you know, there's prophecy. There's uh, you know, foreshadowing of things to come. There's uh, the miracles. That's those were all true, right? Uh, that's. <laughs> It's impossible for God to lie, and God inspired all this, and uh, it's God breathed. But the miracles that, that Jesus performed, but not just Jesus, but all the, the people down through the ages, uh, you, you ever read about the, the three Hebrew guys there? They got thrown into a fiery furnace, but what happened? Well, they, they were spared. The people that threw them in were consumed, but, but they were spared because God was with them, and uh, he had he, there was a fourth man there in the fire with him, right? Hey, that's not just some fairy tale. You know, like we said, there's plenty of fairy tales out there, but uh, this is the true fact. This is recorded history. You, I mean, we ought to learn about it in history class. But, but anyway, these things are all true. Jonah and the whale, people try to contradict that today. They say it's not possible. Well, with God, all things are possible. Amen. <laughs> Uh, I don't understand it. I can't explain how it happened. I just know that God was in the works. <laughs> and God had a use for Jonah, so he didn't allow him to die at that point. He said, I'm going to spit you up, and, and you're going to get, get back to Nineveh, and you're going to preach, and the whole town's going to be saved. And what happened? The whole town was saved. Uh, at the, hey, the preaching of destruction. Preaching that, hey, God is a God of vengeance. God is going to take his wrath out upon you if you don't repent. Amen. That's, he's still that God of vengeance. I'm, I'm glad he's a God of love and mercy, but he's, he's a God of vengeance too. And he's going to take out his wrath one of these days. The earth is going to melt with a fervent heat. You know, every, all these things are going to be passed away. And uh, you know, all those that forsake him, all those that turn him aside and, and say, I don't want anything to do with that Jesus. Well, they're going to be cast out. They're going to be uh, burning. And they're going to be in darkness. And they're going to be miserable for eternity. And I sure don't want to be in that group. My Lord, take me to heaven, Lord. And that's why we need this holy word. We need to know what it says. We need to, to stand firmly upon it. We need to not turn to the right hand or to the left, but stay planted in the, in the word of God. And you ought to read it every day. And uh, I, I saw there yesterday, I said, something like if you spend about two hours and 40 minutes or so. Now, I don't know how, how fast those people read that did the timing. But if you read about two hours and 40 minutes a day, you can get through it in a month. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I that's a, that's really fast, but uh, you know, I, I'll guarantee you, I don't get it through. I don't get through it that fast when my time's through. But um, but two hours and forty minutes. That how much time do you spend re- watching TV? How much time do you spend on the phone? How much time do you spend on social media? How much time do you spend uh, wasting? You know, just wasting life. And I'll say, ouch to that. You know, hey man, we uh, we do so many things that are unprofitable. We we do things. Uh, that, you know, it's, it's for fun, for pleasure, but, uh, but how much better would it be for us to get in this Word? Now, I'm not telling you to get in the Word three hours a day, but it sure wouldn't hurt you. Uh, you know, a half hour would be pretty good if you can get in there. Uh, an hour would be wonderful. Uh, Twelve hours would be fantastic. <laughs> uh, I don't want to set unrealistic goals, but, uh, but we need to absorb the Word of God. We need to make sure it's seeping out of our pores. They, people ought to see the Lord in us. You know, when we're walking down the street, they ought to see His smile on our face. They, they ought not see that grumpiness. They, they ought not hear the curse words come out of our mouth and the anger that, that used to be so frequently present uh, in our bodies. Uh, they ought not to see the frown, the, the frowny face. you just scornfully looking upon people. Oh, but see the love of God. His, his hands are stretched out still. His mercy endures forever. We ought to look more like God. And uh, Well, how are we sanctified? That's what... Uh, we read in another place, how are you made more like God? How are you purified? How are you cleansed from all your unrighteousnesses? Uh, well, you get in the Word. That's how He washes you. He, he cleans you up every day. Get in this Word and He'll straighten you out. And we'll get into more of that in a little bit, I think. But uh, this Word, we need our daily bath. I need washed in the Word of God. I need to, to be cleansed from what the world says. The world says live and let live. The world says do whatever you want. The world says, hey, if you like it, go ahead and do it. Uh, and uh, they take pleasure in all the people that join in the sin with them. Oh, but I, the, the Word says, get clean and come out from among them. Be a separate people. 
and be peculiar. Be the salt of the earth. Hey, there ought to be something different about you. But how do you get that difference? You, you get in the Word. Amen. Know what it says, and but don't just know it, but you've got to live it. You've got to, uh, again, not be a hearer only, but a doer of the Word. Amen. I'm glad that the Word of God tells us how to live. I'm glad that the Word corrects us when we're wrong. I'm glad uh, for the Word of God in, entirely. Amen. Uh, but this Word... Is, uh, it, as we said, it's historical. The Old Testament's good. The New Testament's good. Revelation's good. Genesis is good. And every book in between. Amen. There's not, as we said, there's not one word that's bad. We, we need it all. We need all this. Um, the Psalms are good. Sometimes we need to, the Psalms to uplift us, you know. Uh, sometimes we need to read Job to remember that, hey, it could be worse. <laughs> Uh, we, and to see that God was with Job all the way, and there's, there's nothing can touch you unless it passes through God's hand. Hey, we need to read Moses because, uh, you know, Moses gave us the laws. He gave us a lot of good commandments to live by. And how do you live pure and, and holy, acceptable unto God? And, uh, and you read there also the stubbornness of Israel. Oh, my. How that they were constantly turning back their backs on God. How that he was constantly blessing them. And as soon as they get blessed, they have something more to complain about, right? Oh, hey, you brought us out from Egypt, but hey, now we don't have any water. Hey, you gave us water, but now we don't have any bread. Hey, we got bread, but we don't have any meat. Hey, <laughs> you know, just complain after complain after complaint. Oh, but, but anyway, but that's, that's another message. But, uh, but it's all useful, and we can see ourselves in Israel probably more often than we can see ourselves in Moses, right? Hey, Moses was that holy prophet. He was the holy preacher up there trying to lead a whole country. You know, millions, of, you know, at least a million people, I would estimate, um, you know, trying to lead all those people into the promised land. And you got all those million different attitudes, those million different opinions on everything. And here he's, he's got to be the leader. Hey, we need some holy leaders that will stand up for God. We need some holy leaders that will go up on the mountain and will fast once in a while. We need some holy leaders that will get close to God and be shining bright with the light. So, so bright that people can't stand to look at them because they're so holy. Uh, we need more of that. And again, ouch, we're not there. We don't, we don't read as much as we should. We don't get washed in the Word. We don't pray as much as we should. We don't fast as often as we should. And some people never fast at all. And again, we... If food tastes good and your stomach hurt, you know, stomach growls, and we want to, it doesn't feel good to, to be hungry. But uh, hey, what did what did the psalmist say? I, or well, somebody said anyway. Uh, I've desired your words more than my necessary food. Amen. Desired your words more than my necessary food. I think that was Job actually. But um, forgive me for that. I didn't study it, but um, but it's all good. And this whole word, you know, in all, and that's the thing. It's uh, this book is, is not just one-dimensional. We've got the historical references, and, and you can go check the, hey, these different kings reigned, and, and how, you know, not just the kings of Israel, but the kings of the, the foreign countries, and how it all intertwines, and, uh, and then there's the prophetic stuff. The prophetic stuff is so wonderful to, to read the, the things that God has prophesied would come to pass, and then those things came to pass, and then to read the things that He's promised will come to pass, and there, we're still waiting on those things, and, Oh, or just you just wonder how he's all gonna he's gonna fulfill it, you know? Uh, and God works it all out in such a mysterious way, such a way that's so much higher than our ways we can't comprehend it. It's just the web of His weaving is just it's magnificent. And uh, but it's just you need to get in here. And it's, it's we have that. That's amazing. There's another dimension. And uh, you know the the miracles we already mentioned those the the gospel of Christ and how He just. He told us like it was, right? He, Jesus didn't pull any punches when he was walking in the flesh on this earth. And, uh, you know, he, he didn't make a whole lot of friends a lot of the time when he told it like it was. But, uh, yeah, he, he spoke the truth because he is the truth. And there's, he couldn't lie. Amen. He, uh, you know, he called him out sometimes. And he went into the temple and he showed his anger. He said, I don't make my father's house a den of merchandise, a, house, a den of thieves. But, hey. Uh, this is the house of God. This is the house of prayer. This is the holy sanctuary. This is where we ought to come connect with God and, and, and read His holy word and testify of His goodness and sing His praises. But yet, you, here you are selling all these things, trying to make a profit and making, a, making merchandise. But mm, uh, we're, that's not what we're here for. Oh, but we're here to praise our loving God, to, to praise the Almighty, to, to learn more and to grow in His word. Um, anyway, but it's profitable. I like that Paul used that word here. 
and we'll eventually get done with the chapter. But, um, but he said it's, it's all given by God and it's all profitable. Uh, and what does profitable mean? Well, that means you're gaining something, right? That means you're, uh, you're making headway. You know, it's not a waste of your time to read the Word of God. It's not a, a waste of time to listen to preaching and listen to teaching. And uh, it's, it's not a waste of time to come to church. But uh, it's a profitable thing. And, and you, get, you grow spiritually. Now, sometimes you grow just a tiny bit. And sometimes you grow by leaps and bounds. But yet, nevertheless, there is growth. And there's profit in this thing. There's profit in the Word of God. I find so many other things that there's not profit in. I find so many things that are a waste of time. I find so many things that are a drain of resources. But you'll find that if you devote yourself to the Word of God, you'll never find yourself wanting. But you'll always be more plenteous than you started. Uh, it's, it's profitable. It's, and it's profitable in multiple ways. And he jumps into that here. Uh, it's profitable for doctrine. That's the teaching of the whole Scripture. That's the Holy Law. That's, you know, hey, I'm glad that the, the, law, the Word tells me how to live uh, because otherwise I'd just be doing my own thing and I'd get myself in trouble. But the Word of God tells me, hey, I should love my neighbor as myself. Amen. I should, excuse me, I should stop and help my neighbor if I have the capability, if I have knowledge and know-how, uh, stop and help them alongside the road. If, if I've got a coat and somebody's cold, I give them my coat, whether it's the one on my back or another one in my closet. If somebody's hungry, I take the food and give it to them. You know, if we, it, the, but it, I mean, it's multiple, uh, it's multifold here. You know, we, uh, the word tells us how we ought to live. Man, it's, it's profitable for our doctrine. And uh, again, we need to get to Sunday school. We need to learn what the word says. We need to. Uh, but not just Sunday school, but we need to learn the Word every day of our life. We need to meditate upon it day and night. We need to, to think about it when we're laying in bed ready to go to sleep. And, oh, thank you, Lord, for your wonderful words. You know, thank you for your guidance. And, oh, and, oh, I like where it says this, or I like where it says that. And, and keep on going. You know, we, um, it's helpful. It's profitable to do these things. Uh, all right, we'll try to move along here. It's for reproof. Amen. A reproof, that's a word I like, you know, we use it, uh, and it's, it's, to me it's hard to get a definition, but anyway, but it's, uh, but I, I wrote down here, calling out your faults, right? It's uh, somebody telling you you're wrong, right? You, uh, and uh, you find that reproof and rebuke kind of go hand in hand there, that we, hey, it's good to tell one another when you're doing wrong. Hey, you shouldn't have said that like that. And uh, sometimes, it, oh man, when a brother or sister will tell you, hey, I, I didn't like the way you said that, <laughs> Oh, that, that hurts your heart, don't it? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I feel, you just feel about this big, you know, when you say something you shouldn't have or when you, you did something you shouldn't have and somebody calls you out on it. Oh, forgive me. You ask for forgiveness from that person uh, and, uh, and you say, Oh, Lord, most of all, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against you. Lord, please forgive me of all this, this sin that I've committed. And, uh, but we, uh, you know, if somebody doesn't call us out on it, sometimes we'll just go on our merry way. We'll... We'll think we're all right. We'll think nobody saw that. And we'll forget that there's an all-seeing God that knows everything about us. He knows the very hairs of your head. He knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. He knows all about you. And He knows what you did. He knows what you did last summer. He knows what you did last night. He knows what you thought uh, before I came up here. He knows what you're thinking right now. <laughs> he knows that you're thinking, hey, will this guy ever shut up? But uh, he... Uh, I'm glad that the word reproves us. And we get in here, and like we said, Jesus, uh, when he was walking on the earth, and, and we read in John chapter 1 that he's the word, and, uh, but he, he's the word made flesh, and he, come, he came here and uh, he gave us the very word that we needed, and he, uh, he didn't pull any punches. He, he told the sinners that they were sinners and said, hey, you must be born again. And uh, said, hey, I'm the way, I'm the tr truth, I'm the life, right? He's... Uh, you want salvation? Here I am. You want water? I've got a well that you'll never thirst again. Uh, you know, come, take of me. <laughs> I'm the bread of life. And uh, you know, he told, told him, hey, you Pharisees, <laughs> you've got these all this long laundry list of laws, and you're trying to uphold them. You're trying to, to make people adhere to these laws, and you, you're not adhering to them yourself. You know, you're... I'm here trying to do good on the Sabbath day, and you're telling me that I shouldn't do this good. You're, wouldn't you go get your donkey out of the ditch, you know, if, you, if it was in there? Uh, you know, and how hypocritical. And he called them out on that. And uh, if the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, if they were very spiritual at all, they should have been pricked in their hearts. They should have said, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, they should have repented right then and there. Uh, but sadly, a lot of people get pricked in their hearts. They, they get hardened in their hearts. They... Uh, 
they don't like the word of reproof. They don't like to being told they're wrong. But uh, but those that are born again, we like to be told we're wrong by the Lord. You know, we like to be in fellowship with God. Because if you're not in, if you're doing what's wrong, then you're not in fellowship with God. Then you're you're getting farther and farther away, right? Where um, Jesus said, "Hey, if you're <laughs> you're my friend if you keep my commandments." And, I want to be a friend of God. I want Him to be my friend. I want to be best buddies with Jesus, right? And uh, we can't do that if we're out of fellowship. We can't do that if we're sinning. We can't do that if we're just living our own way. But we need to be in this holy word. I, mm, let Him correct us. <laughs> hey, go through that Ten Commandments if you need to. Go through the other commandments if you need to. Go through the New Testament and, and uh, get the good teaching there. Uh, hey, there's there's plenty in there. <laughs> uh, you don't like the way it's worded somewhere, uh, get it. Go to the New Testament. Maybe you'll find it in there. Maybe we'll, they'll word it there. There's lots of correlations. But, but anyway, uh, it's all good. It's all profitable for doctrine. It's all profitable uh, for reproof. And it's profitable for correction. And that, that's what we said there. The reproof kind of goes hand in hand with the correction. And uh, it's good. We need somebody to tell us that we're wrong. Hey, uh, we need more friends like Nathan the prophet there. David was caught in the sin with Bathsheba. And... Uh, he comes up there, or Nathan the prophet comes up and tells David, Thou art the man, right? He told him about the parable of the sheep, right? That uh, said, Hey, this, this guy, he's done wrong, right? He's, he's got to repay fourfold. He's got to repay a massive amount. You know, he's done wrong by his neighbor. And Nathan told him, Thou art the man. Oh, it hurts when that finger's pointing back at you. But we need some more Nathans. We need some more Nathans that are willing to, to tell us, Thou art the man. You've done wrong. You've sinned against God. Oh, but we need more repentance like David had. Oh, restore me unto me the joy of thy salvation. Yes, thee and thee only have I sinned, Lord. Oh, forgive me. You know, we, we need that holy, righteous repentance. We need to, to feel that sorrow in our hearts and uh, bad enough that we won't want to do that stuff again. <clears throat> Sometimes we want to say, forgive me, but then we want to go out and do that same thing, right? That's, well, that's not forgiveness. You're not repenting. You're not... You're just saying, well, I, I want to have all the blessings of God, but not live according to His will. And that just, that's not how God works. We've uh, we got to be in fellowship with Him. You want the blessings of God, you've got to be obedient to His will. You've got to get in the Word. Let Him wash you. Let Him correct you. Let Him chastise you. Let Him turn you into what you ought to be. Let Him make that 180 in your life. Uh, sometimes maybe it's not a 180. Sometimes it's just a small detour we need to get back on. Hopefully that's where we're at. Hopefully we're... Not drifting so far from the shore we can't see the lighthouse, but let us come back in uh, to the shore, be with our Lord. But um, <clears throat> Correction. Yeah, repentance, we want to walk in the good way. He, he wants us to walk in the good way. He doesn't want us to walk on that broad way that leads to destruction. Uh, he wants us on that straight, narrow way that leads to righteousness. And that's what, that leads us to the final part of that verse there, right? Uh, he says, for reproof, for correction... And for instruction in righteousness. I'm glad for that instruction in righteousness. Hey, there's plenty of books out there. There's chicken noodle soup for the soul. There's uh, how to make good friends. There's, uh, you know, the sisterhood of the traveling pants. I don't know. There's all kinds of books out there. But uh, <laughs> the power of positive thinking, the power of negative thinking. Oh, but I like this good book because there's the power, uh, the instruction of righteousness. You know, we... Uh, he tells us what in the good way is, what, uh, and he tells us to walk in that way. Uh, and uh, there's there's no other book like my Bible. There's no other book like the Holy Word. Uh, I shouldn't have said my Bible, but you know, the the good old Bible that's that's been written. Uh, it's written for uh, for our use, you know. And we ought to be blessed. We ought to thank God every day that we have a Bible because there has been times in the uh, in ages past where people didn't have Bibles that they could go home and read. And there's time, you know, there, there's certain instances where there's Bibles maybe printed, but the people didn't have the ability to read. They didn't know what the words was, were. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> English teachers, forgive me. But, uh, but we ought to be grateful that, that God has blessed us. He's given us resource after resource. And uh, not just the Word itself, but there's commentary upon commentary upon commentary and you have to be careful which commentary you get obviously but um, but anyway but there there's re so many re abundance of resources and and yet we don't crack anything open <laughs> uh, yet the the nation and the world as a whole we, we don't get in the word of God we we don't use the greatest resource we have <laughs> Amen. Uh, 
We don't have to know all the answers. You just got to know where to find them. Right? That's, that's what we told me at my, when I was in school. Uh, you know, they, uh, they said you don't have to have all the knowledge. You just have to know where to find it. And I'm glad for that because I, I certainly can't remember all the medications there are. I certainly can't remember all the uh, interactions. I certainly can't remember all the mechanisms of action. Uh, all this and that. can't remember everything about everything. But I'm glad they make resources. <laughs> Uh, we've got a great resource here. Uh, we've got the God of gods. We've got the ruler of all the universe. And he is, that God has spoken to us through his holy prophets. And, and he, caught, he inspired certain men throughout the years to pin these words down that we might be blessed, that we might be encouraged, that we might be instructed in, in all the ways of righteousness. Uh, hey, we're, we're blessed. <laughs> Amen. He, he's given us this for our benefit, that we might walk in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Hey, he, he's given us this holy word that we wouldn't be like the devil, that we wouldn't be prideful, but we'd be humble, and that we'd be, <laughs> we wouldn't be arrogant, that we wouldn't be uh, self-seeking, but we'd be seeking the, wellness, the well-being of others, that we'd put others first and ourselves last, and we'd, of, first, of course, God first above all. But, you know, he's, he's counter to everything that we were born into, right? He, uh, he's... <laughs> It's counterintuitive to, to our survival. You know, we, we just want to say, me, me, me. I want my benefit. I want this and that. Uh, I want to use others for my benefit. But no, God says, be the servant of all. You want to be great in the kingdom of God? Be the servant of all. <laughs> Humble yourself down and wash somebody's feet. Give them some dinner. Give them a cup of cold water in my name. That's, uh, that's, that's God. And his, his ways are so much higher than our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. They're so much higher. Uh, <laughs> And this, this word is for our benefit, for our instruction. It's, it's profitable. <laughs> and it's for our instruction in righteousness. And that's the, in verse 17. You can say amen. We're on the last verse here. But that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And that's the ultimate goal. He doesn't want us to be some shabby, half-done thing. But he wants us to be perfect. He wants us to be complete, entire, want, or wanting nothing, lacking nothing. Is that we would just be the exact right thing that we ought to be. The perfect vessel uh, and he's working on his potter's wheel, right? He's, you can go over to Jeremiah for that, but uh, he's working us. He's, uh, he's, we're, we ought to be a moldy or a moldable piece of clay, not hardened, because you can't do anything with a hardened piece of clay. But oh, that we'd be soft and pliable, moldable in, in the hand of God, letting Him make us into His image, and He's spinning us on that wheel, that potter's wheel. You know, it's a, it's a process, you know, to get that, get us just right. Sometimes we got. Lumpy net, lumpy edges. Sometimes we got uh, holes, and sometimes we just got weird deformities. But uh, but he's he's there trying to work us on that wheel, trying to make us a smooth, perfect vessel. And uh, that's what this word does. You know, we get in this word and we say, Lord, teach me today. Make me in your image. Make me what you want me to be. Hey, uh, make me more like you than I was yesterday. Use me as you see fit. <laughs> and he'll he'll make you perfect. He'll make you entire. He'll make you uh, now. It may, you may have to go through some hardships. You may have to go through troubles and trials. But I read somewhere else where it says, hey, count it all joy. <laughs> I think that's over in Peter. But uh, hey, he says, count it, and he mentions that tribulation constantly. Hey, count it all joy <laughs> when you fall into diverse tri tribulations. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, he wants us to be perfect. This uh, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And I thought, uh, you know, that's really furnished is kind of a weird phrasing to me again, but, uh, but I thought, you know, I think of a house, you know, you, you look at the real estate market and you'll see some, some homes come pre-furnished and some come empty, you know. Uh, we, you know, the empty is full of potential, but hey, you got already furnished, you got the appliances, you got the chairs and the bed and you got everything already laid out. You don't need to do anything. All you got to do is show up and that's your house, right? And, uh, but that's what we need to be. We need to be full up. We need to have all the stuff we need. We, and that's what he wants to do for us is give us all the tools we need. He, needs to, he wants to make us, uh, give us our bed. He'd give us our, our refrigerator. Give us our couch. And give us, but uh, as far as spiritually speaking, he wants to, to give us love. He wants to give us mercy. He wants to give us uh, you know, uh, faith right, and, and uh, helpfulness to others. And, um, and I like... Uh, I was reading over in Acts and how about Stephen. He, hey, we want to be like Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost and faith. He, full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we, he wants to, to make us, and, and as we see over in Ephesians, uh, 
get that full armor of God. We want to have the helmet of salvation, the, the shield of faith, the, uh, the breastplate of righteousness, our, having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, having our loins girt about with truth, and uh, uh, taking that sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hey, we need that sword. You want to fight the devil this week? Well, get the sword. Get the Word of God out and prepare for him because he's going to be knocking at your door. I guarantee you, uh, in one way or another, you're going to face temptation. You're going to face a battle. Um, it may be loss of a loved one. It may be uh, decrease in profits. It, it may be a sickness in your own life. It, uh, it may be somebody said something about you on Facebook. I don't know. Uh, uh, it may be somebody cuts you off in traffic and you, you know, you're tempted to get mad at them. I've been there, done that. But, uh, but the Lord wants us to, to be loving and long-suffering and merciful uh, to everyone. And uh, He wants us to have that full armor. He wants us... Uh, to be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. He wants us to be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Uh, he wants us to be ready to go out there and, and, and do His will, to be able to, to, to help your neighbor, to be able to lend a helping hand, to be able to be His hand extended. Say, I'm doing this for my God. <laughs> hey, why do I love you? Because my God first loved me, and I want to show His love to you. Amen. Uh, oh, that we'd be more like that. Oh, that we'd be more like His hand extended. Oh, that we'd be, be the servant of all. Mm. I'm going to leave you with this. And I found this in Matthew, Matthew Henry's commentary. You've got to always quote him, I think. But, um, oh, that we may love our Bibles more and keep closer to them than ever. Oh that, we, oh, that we love and cherish this Bible. Oh, that we would wake up tomorrow morning and say, oh, where's my Bible? <laughs> this Bible ought to be precious in your sight. And... Uh, you know, we've heard about people sticking their, you know, just kind of laying on the floor or something, you know, and, and stacking stuff on top of their Bible. And I, uh, to me, that just hurts my heart. You know, it just, uh, I just want to take your stuff. I see, if I ever see anything like that, if I see somebody set something on top of the Bible, uh, I'll just, I'll just, <laughs> I just want to take it like Jesus did the, the tables there in the temple. You know, just turn it over and say, that's, that's my God's word. You know, that's the Holy Scripture. That's the words of life. This is, this is holy. This is we ought to revere this with everything. You know, the, you know, the pages before they had the Holy Scripture on them, the pages were nothing. They just came from regular trees, and the ink came from somewhere else, and, uh, you know, and all the binders and stuff that they may use. But uh, all of it individually, there's nothing holy about that stuff. But, oh, when it comes together, oh, when we get to see the Holy Word of God, oh, that uh, this is where we meet with Him. This is where I find out what He wants for my life. You know, this is this would be above every other book that you have. You know, this this is more than a book. This is a, this is the roadmap to heaven. This is your roadmap for life. Like we said, it's a lamp unto our, or a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. It's uh, everything we need. <laughs> uh, just like our, if you meet the King of England, or well, I guess it's the Queen right now. If you meet some royalty in this world, wouldn't you have to kind of be reverent to him? And in the old days, you'd have to curtsy or you'd have to bow down, humble yourself down. You'd have to kiss their signet. You know, you'd have to uh, kiss their feet or, you know, oh, uh, long live the king. You'd have to say something to you, uh, saying how lowly you are and how high they are. How much more ought we to, to revere the word of God and, and the, knowing that it's from the Almighty, inspired by the very God of all creation. Uh, yeah, it's not... Just, these aren't just some man's creation. It's not just some fables and ideas. It's, uh, it wouldn't have stood all the test of time had it not been. Amen. It's, it wouldn't have stood up to, to such scrutiny as, uh, you know, through all adversity. But, oh, but it stands the test of time. It'll stand when the world is on fire. The Word of God will still be here. The Word of God will endure forever because He is the Word. And he, uh, One of these days I'm going to go be with the Word in the in the flesh, well, in the spirit, somehow we're going to see him as he is. I'm, I don't understand it all, but I know that I shall see him for myself and not another. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going to try to be quiet, uh, but we uh, we ask that you consider all these things and ponder them in your heart. You know, like all the you read that about Mary. You know, we just had Christmas time. Oh, she heard these things and she kept them and pondered them in her heart. And uh, oh, that we would meditate upon the Word of God both day and night. That we would ponder upon the Word. That we would uh, reminisce about the good times. That we would ruminate upon uh, the things that he's telling us. And, and like the old cow that, that gets the, the cud, it chews that grass and just chews it and chews it and chews it. Swallows it, regurgitates it, <laughs> and chews it and chews it and chews it. Yeah, we need to do that with the word of God. That we would just continually uh, swallow it and chew it. And, or that we would 
hey, I like that. Let me try that again. <laughs> and and re you know, rechew it, re re taste it, and swallow it and say, oh, that tastes good. Amen. <laughs> uh, this, his word is sweet. And uh, but, uh, Anyway, sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. More precious than much fine gold. Uh, that's over in Psalm 19. Amen. But uh, we'll ask that the Lord uh, bless these words here. Bow with me in prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, this day of life that you've given us. We thank you for this church to come and gather together and worship your holy name. We thank you for the word tonight. We thank you for your holy word that you've given to us, Lord. We uh, pray that you, you got it out the way that, that you wanted it, Lord. That I didn't hinder you in, in any way, Lord. But, oh, please instill these words in our hearts and our minds, Lord, and, and help us to, to draw ever closer to you, Lord, that uh, we would desire your word more than... Uh, more than anything else in this world, Lord, that we would cherish our time with you, that we would draw ever closer to you, that we would be more like you and, and less like we used to be, Lord. Uh, we, uh, we want you to mold us, Lord. Make us what we ought to be tonight, Lord. Uh, and again, instill these things in our hearts, Lord, that we might go into this world and, and be peculiar people, that we might live changed lives, Lord, that this wouldn't just go in one ear and out the other, but, oh, that we would be hearers and doers also, that uh, that we could reach some souls for you, Lord, that they might come to know you. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name.